Hello Indie Game fans, Steam is doing something interesting this week, having a mini Steam Next Festival titled Going Rogue, where they've lumped together Roguelite, Roguelike, Souls-like and Metroidvania games all in one, where if you know anything about me, are all my favourite genres. As such, I've covered many of the bigger upcoming games, but events like this are great for discovering new ones, so here are some new upcoming Roguelite titles that I think are of interest. Let's begin with Before the Last Hour, a gorgeous roguelite deck builder set in a post-apocalyptic universe. It has you exploring the desolate wasteland, having to find the origin of the end of time, while fighting off enemies who have been turned by something known as Oblivion, resulting in feral, mindless shells of their former selves. The art in this game is a highlight, from the overworld map, animated cutscenes and even in combat, with strategic tactical deck building like State Aspire or perhaps Neoverse as well, where the release is coming up later this month. There are a handful of roguelite first-person shooters that have really made an impact, but another that looks to join the fray is Symbiotic, where you're wielding the titular Evolving Weapon, which I hope has interesting upgrades. An action room light that looks pretty alright is Metal Mutation, one that has a little bit of cell shading going on especially in the enemies and bosses where you are reawakened from cryogenic sleep and find yourself in the middle of a cyberpunk dystopia having to take on mechanical monsters. This has more MOBA style influences as seen in the abilities in the bottom right, but the action and combat does look pretty good. It does come to us from a Chinese developer as well, so I do want to see if they bring any new ideas to the table. A definite trend that I have seen is the Vampire Survivors like trying to get a rub from one of the most successful launches in recent memory, with Spirit Hunter's Infinite Horde being one such title. The theme and art style is different, but it's an action title where you're simply blasting away at enemies passively with abilities that fire off on cooldowns, and it is about finding the optimal combination of upgrades. One of the weirdest roguelite titles that I've come across is Golfy, a, wait for it, roguelite deck builder golf title, which, I'll admit, is something that I've not seen before. It does look like you're playing a golf game, but do have cards as special abilities to be used to give you an advantage so it gets on the list due to the clever idea. If you know me, of course you'll know that I'll be interested in a game like Tiny Folks since it does use very minimalist pixel art and a 2-bit colour palette, but more importantly, it's a roguelite management sim RPG that I think looks neat. You're essentially recruiting and training the townsfolk to face off against monsters, where every expedition gets you resources to upgrade the town and unlock more merchants and so on, looking completely up my alley. A 
title that I've mentioned before but it's been quite a while is Wild Woods, an action roguelite that has, curiously, a co-op focus. I don't think I'm alone in thinking that roguelites tend to be single player experiences, so to add in an overcooked like component is interesting. We are working together to protect your wagon as you make your way through a dangerous forest, looking fantastic as well. The Black King had been quite object, and other to the white side had gone on his subjects. Before leaving, a black bishop gave him a warning, told him his wrath would be his undoing. Indie developers never fail to amaze me with how they iterate on the concept of chess, where Shotgun King, the final checkmate, is a title of interest. All he had left was his Essentially, you just play as the king but have a shotgun, needing to avoid the regular chess-like movements of enemy pieces while blasting away at them, looking like a very interesting entry. I love my pixel art and roguelite platformers, so of course Ninja Soul got my attention, looking to be a fast and frantic one of these that looks pretty great. You play as a ninja with the ability of death backtracking in quotes, which I think is a means of explanation for the roguelite structure of the game, where I do appreciate it when developers try to weave it into the story itself. It's from a Chinese developer with a pretty rough translation on the Steam store page, so from what I gather, it is about our heroine returning to her homeland to find it overrun by monsters, hence she has to take up arms to fight against this. Where I do want to shout out the fantastic looking katana and ninjutsu abilities that look pretty awesome. War. Destruction. As the kingdom falls into chaos, a new threat arises. The world needs heroes. The world needs legends. Honestly, I cannot believe it's taken this long, but Legends of Kingdom Rush is a roguelite title from the developer of the legendary Tower Defense series, taking it in a whole new direction which I do appreciate. It has you leading a band of heroes as they go on a quest to save the kingdom, with turn-based tactical combat on a hexagonal grid as the main combat mechanic. It is quite a change from Tower Defense, so I do want to see their developer chops in crafting a compelling game which, from their vast experience, I do have full confidence in. I've always loved the art of their games, but this game does look to take it to the next level, so for simply looking very promising, it takes the number one spot. For more roguelite titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.